Hey guys, Corel Cooper here. Welcome to my weekly rant where I'll be discussing baseball topics of the past week. First topic today, guys, is the World Baseball Classic, which kicks off in March. Um, there's been a lot of debate about whether or not the World Baseball Classic is, is good for baseball, is good for Major League Baseball. Um, in my opinion, I think it is. Anytime you can get a collection of, of players, the best players in the world, together to play for their home country in a tournament, I think uh, it, it's good for the sport in general. Um, at the same time, I understand why uh, you know some teams don't want their players to play in this tournament. You know, for example, let's look at the Mets. Um, there's been reports that uh, the Mets are are talking to Johan Santana and and trying to convince him or or even tell him that he cannot play for. Um, the Venezuela team in this tournament um, because of the risk of injury and also the amount of money the, the Mets are play, paying Santana. Um, they don't want to see him injured. And, and you know, I, a number of teams um, feel the same way. They don't want their players playing in a tournament, um, you know, during the time when they should be in spring training um, and risking injury or even risking, you know, fatigue later on in the season, you know. Now you're talking about starting baseball, uh, you know, in February um, and playing, you know, if your team goes to the playoffs all the way through October, you know, that wear and tear um, on someone uh, could be significant and could hurt a team later on in the season. Um, you know, I still think that it's it's I still think that the World Baseball Classic is good for baseball. Um, the only thing I would question is the timing of it. You know, having this tournament in March, like I said before, when the players should be in spring training is a little difficult. The only thing is I don't really have a solution to that. I'm not sure, um, you know, when is the best time to play a tournament like that. So I would love to hear what you guys have to think about that. It's been reported that the Boston Red Sox are on the verge of signing John Smoltz. Um, and that got me to thinking about some of the moves that the Red Sox have made this offseason. Um, sure, they lost out on the Teixeira sweepstakes, but with signings like Smoltz and Penny and even Baldelli, what they've done is they've solidified the back end of their rotation and have also made their bench stronger. And I think it's these types of moves that are going to make the Boston Red Sox the team to beat in the AL East this year. The Mets have signed Tim Redding to a one-year, $2 million contract. Um, as I commented on two of my favorite Mets blogs, uh, MetsReports.com and the Repolitans.com, I'm going to reserve judgment on this signing until I see what else the Mets do. Um, you know, if the Mets go out and they can get um, either low or, or re-sign Perez and, and put one of those guys in the rotation as their number two starter, then, you know, that pushes Maine back to... Uh, number three and Pelfrey to number four and then you know Redding would be the fifth starter I can live with that but if you're telling me that you know this signing of Redding now you're not going to either get Lowe or Perez then I have a problem with that so I'm going to hold off on judgment on on this uh, Redding signing until I see what else Mets, the Mets do uh, with their starting rotation love to hear what you guys think talk to you soon